Welcome to a special edition of the Referrals Podcast. Introducing our new Daily Dose. We've assembled the ultimate crisis response team for your business. Generous leaders from around the globe teaming up to teach, guide, and lead you through this time of isolation and quarantine. Now, let's meet your host, Michael J. Mayer. Hey, everybody, this is Michael J. Mayer with another episode of The Daily Dose, your daily dose of positivity and productivity. We know that if you're positive and productive, you're happy and you have control over your happiness. Here's the thing. Have you ever wanted to literally learn how to use social media to get health, wealth, and happiness? Everything you want in life, you can get through social media. True, true. You can make it happen. I will tell you, if you could ask questions of one of the top social media experts in the world. What is one question that you would ask this person? We are talking top of the top, known as the social media queen. Today, I have to tell you, I am so honored to have this guest on, but I'm gonna make you wait. I'm gonna make you wait. I've got some announcements. First of all, have you created your Facebook group yet? If you haven't, like, what the heck are you waiting on? This is the time. You're going to lose out. Here's what you don't want to do. You don't want to be invited to the Facebook group of your top competitor. Think about that. You need to create and lead a Facebook right now. This is the time to grow your Facebook group. This is the time to get your Facebook group going. I know I'm preaching to the choir. 90% of you have Facebook groups. You've got 10 members. You've got 100 members. Some of you have thousands of members. Some of you have 54,000 members. Some of you have 75,000 members in your Facebook group. You are rocking and rolling. I know a group that has 71,000 members that was started on March 27th. What are you waiting for? Get off your duff. Make it happen. Create and lead a Facebook group. Now, next thing is... Remember your daily five, your five star, the five star, five steps to attracting referrals. Your five star, your five steps are one, identify a positive, energetic, influential connector. You're going to identify somebody who's positive or happy or kind. Then you're going to call them with the VIP sheet. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't care. I don't care if you fill out the whole form right? All I care about, ask them their favorite movie and their favorite book. Ask them how they're doing. Just make the call. Then write yourself a handwritten note. After you're done, you're going to write them a handwritten note. And then you're going to invite them to your Facebook group. You're going to do five of those a day. That's it. Five steps to attract referrals, five steps with each person, and you're going to just do five a day. That's it. You're done with your prospecting at that point. You're done. You had a great day. Smoke a cigar. Have a beer. Like, play with your kids. Whatever it may be. So, bottom line is, those are your action items. I want all of you to put in the comments below your link to your Facebook group. In the comments below. Comments below, link to your Facebook group. Or say the name of your Facebook group. Also, below, I want you to put add 25. Add 25. If you are committing to adding 25 people to your life, to your Facebook group, to your database this week, you're going to add 25. Five a day times five. It's very simple and yet very powerful. Now, looking ahead, are you kidding me with this week? Are you kidding me? Last week, I was saying this was the greatest week in the history of the Daily Dose. Look at this. I mean, last week, last week, we had Hellickson on Monday talking about mindset. We had Sean Callagy, Tony Robbins' right-hand guy, a blind guy, a blind guy out producing so many people. And Shooty from zero to 54,000 members in one group in three years. Oh, by the way, I'm sorry, that's not one group. She has two groups of 50,000 people. James Malinchek, the secret millionaire on Thursday, And on Friday, we had one of the greatest leaders in the country 
for associations and real estate, Don McNaughton. And this week, we start out with Gogo Bethke. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? The social media queen's going to be on the Daily Dose. We got Brandon Tracy tomorrow, one of the top leaders in the country. He's going to talk about building trust and equity with ease. Johnny and Toro White, they've given $100,000. Their give back campaign, $100,000. They've given $100,000. Tara Carter on Thursday talking about the Sunday night ritual and rituals. And then guess what? Boom. Hey, how about Oprah? How about Tony Robbins? How about Michael Mayer? How about all of us on, and we are going to honor the high school seniors across the world on the Daily Dose on Friday. And I have the most amazing announcement on Friday that you will, you will not believe what me and my team have been doing behind the scenes. It will blow your mind. That's Friday. We may go a little long on Friday, so make your plans accordingly. Now, this is my reminder to all of you to start your watch party. If you're not familiar with how to do it, it's very simple. Just go to the share button below, click on share, go up and click on start watch party. Don't hit okay because you'll be sharing it in the Gen Gen group. That doesn't do anybody any good. You need to share it on your personal page or you need to share it on your personal profile or you need to share it on your business page or you need to share it in your Facebook group, which is the whole entire intention of the Daily Dose was to give you something to post in your Facebook group every day. That's why we're doing it. Otherwise, why are we doing it? Come on, people. This is too much fun. So here's the thing. Start your watch party now. And I'm telling you, I don't care if somebody's 11. I don't care if they're 111. They're going to get a ton of value out of today. Go-Go doesn't cuss, right? She's going to keep it clean. She's going to keep it G, right? So here's the thing. I'm not going to share too much about this lady. I'm not. Because her incredible story is part of today's episode, but it's going to be a movie someday. I truly believe that. She is one of the top 3% of the realtors in the nation and has a growing team, including her husband, Dwayne, who recently left corporate America to join her team. Think about that for a second. She has a growing team of over 130 agents in over 30 states. And it, she has done it all by keeping it real, people. She is all authenticity. This is what has earned her the title of the social media queen. Without further ado, I would love, and it is with my privilege to truly introduce to the Daily Dose, Miss Gogo Bethke. Welcome, Gogo. Woo! Thank you for having me. How exciting. I love the uh, energy you bring. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. I, I'm on fire. I have to tell you that. Like this weekend, I cubbied hold in a hotel room all weekend, go go. Hotel all by all by myself. I checked in on fri on Friday at like four and I checked out on Sunday at four. And I created an entire 30 day challenge course. Literally awesome. day by day, all the PowerPoint slides, all the all the everything. So anyway, so that, that will be launching soon, but I will tell you, and then just like having a great day today. So thank you for, you know what? I got to go, go Beth on. It doesn't get any better than that. Like you wake up in the morning and you go, I think about this every day. What would make today the best day ever? Like, you know how you have kids, but go, go. Oh yeah. Two. Yeah. So have you ever snuggled with them and oh. they go, mom, best day ever. Like, <laughs> My son, like, I've had probably five of those moments in his 11 years. And we're, like, snuggling. He's like, Dad, today was the best day ever. And you're like, oh, my God. You know, it's like, oh, my God, that's so awesome. So I was thinking, what would make today the best day ever for me? Go, go. Right, go, go. Oh, and, I, is there I, a better I, name I, than go, go? I, I mean, mean I, like, I, I'm changing my name. I'm changing my name. I, I got to I got to go with something. I, I Go, go. It's hard to beat that, right? Jen, Jen, we've got go, go on Jen, Jen today, right? Which is la, la. That, I mean, it's like, it's all good. So I have, it's impossible. I have to tell you, like when we did our pre-call, I, for those of you that aren't familiar with the daily dose, welcome, first of all, to the generosity generation. Secondly, I always interview the people that I don't necessarily know 
before I have them on the daily dose. It's kind of a filter. And yes, there have been people that are not on the daily dose that I've talked to just simply because it, it wasn't a great fit for our model. We have a model. We have a flow of how we wanted all these to go. Yeah. Now, within 32 seconds, I was like, go goes in and I like her. We did a phone call and it was just like, she's happy. Like, <laughs> bring me happy people, people, you know? And uh, I would just say, and then, and then you told me your story and I'm like, okay, like, this is big. Like, this is awesome. So let's start with that. You know, tell us a little bit about why you came to America okay. and, you know, how you, how you figured out, out of all the things, America is the land of opportunity, you decided to fall in the worst. I'm just kidding. I'm in real estate. So, no, you, you fell into real estate. So, so yeah. tell us that story, please. And just the tail end of, uh, of the last recession in 2008 is when all that madness was happening. I got licensed in 2011. So I got in at foreclosures and short sales, and all my friends said I was crazy and losing my mind. They were like, you're never going to make money in real estate. Um, so my, my story, since we we're talking about happy, the reason I'm in this country is Eddie Murphy. Because to me, and let me tell you this story. So I was born in Romania, Transylvania, um, and uh, it was communism up until I was eight years old. And then finally, when they killed Ceausescu, they put him to the wall, they put a bullet in his head, and my parents thought it was a great idea to watch that live <laughs> <laughs> as an eight-year-old. Um, so <laughs> I, I saw that, but I remember my dad. So I don't know if you understand communism. You never lived through it. So as an eight-year-old, I can tell you the way I experienced it. You're not allowed to, a grocery, you literally buy it like a punch card. Like, you know, if a family of four is allowed to 10 eggs and a gallon of milk and two, two brats for the week and the rest of what you're going to eat, God help you, um, you cut up for the Western world. Like, you literally live in a shoebox with the lid on. Like, mm. you don't know what's going on in the world. The news are censored. You don't know. I didn't know Black people existed. That's how censored the news was. Wow. So I remember my dad going to... Finally, they killed Ceausescu, we became a democratic country, and he went and bought a color television, he bought a VCR, and he came home with two VCRs, and it was Eddie Murphy's 48 Hours. Oh, oh, and I just thought, everybody thinks it's coming to America, it's not, right. it's the 48 Hours, but I remember since we talked about Happy, I remember watching that, that movie and just seeing that man being so happy and so funny. And as my eight-year-old mind, I, that was my first recollection of I'm going wherever that man is at, because to me, that was happiness. So you're telling me that Eddie Murphy is, is the reason for your coming to America. Is that what you're saying? Yes, yes. Oh, my gosh. And, you know, and Murphy is, needs to be, like, applauded. Like, I know, nice. and I wish, and, and this is one of my hopes, because I understand the six degrees of separation. I know somebody who you know, you know somebody who knows somebody who knows somebody, that hopefully one day somebody knows Eddie Murphy and I get to give that man a hug. Um, because if it wasn't for his 48 Hours movie and his character in it and how awesome and happy he was in it, I would not be in this country today. That is amazing. So how do you end up, uh, what, how long ago was that? So um, that movie was in, I was eight, so two, uh, 2000, uh, no, 1990. And what year did you come to America? 2003. So I was 21 years old when I came to America. Okay. And I didn't know a single human being in this country, like not one soul. Wow, that's <laughs> I scary. Borrowed, I borrowed $200 and I got on a train and then I got on a uh, plane and then I got off in New York and this big black guy was talking to me at the airport and I said, English, please. And he goes, I'm speaking it. And I was like, <laughs> Oh, okay. If you're speaking English, I'm clearly not. So I had a lot to learn. My English was very broken, very, very broken. Um, people tell me I still have an accent. I can't hear it because this is the way I talk, but um, it was yep. much, much worse. Now it's just cool though. Your oh, English is really <laughs> solid and you just have this slight accent. It's just cool. Like oh, accents are cool, right? It's just, it's just a, it's a coolness factor of like 10, right? Oh, good. Yay. So uh, then I, um, I came as an au pair, a living nanny. Um, coming from Eastern Europe, it's really not easy to get visa to the US. So my options were to come as an au pair, work on an oil rig, believe it or not, or wow. work on a cruise ship. And oh, thank you, honey. And I got all three jobs, actually. Thankfully, thank God, the au pair job was the first job, because could you imagine me on an oil rig in the middle of the <laughs> No, yeah. Me neither. So you know how God sometimes saves you from your great ideas? Yeah. Thank you, Lord, for not uh, granting all of my ideas. <laughs> and um, so I came as an au pair. I, um, my host family was here in Brighton, Michigan. I met my husband two months after that. 
uh, two months being here in the country. And then two months after that, we were married. Mm, wow. and we, <laughs> we've been married now for 17 years. So like Instagram, it's like Insta marriage. Like Instagram? that That was like Insta relationship. That You're yeah. in the Insta stuff. Like I Insta su success, Insta model, Instagram, Insta marriage. I like it. I like it. So, so how did you go from an... Uh, from doing that job to mm -hmm. real estate? Like how long was it before you got into that? Yeah, so we got married and then I did all kinds of jobs. Like I worked corporate America, front desk, uh, data entry, um, restaurant food safety, or jewelry sales in a jewelry store. I worked as a waitress, so babysitter, and you name it. It was more of a process of an elimination of I, I, what I don't wanna be when I grow up. Right, yeah. And uh, I was kind of forced to stay home when our oldest, uh, youngest was born. He, uh, we almost lost him to mm. Giardia at nine weeks. And uh, so I was forced to stay home at the time. And uh, being a stay-at-home mom, never, never, never even been an idea in my mind because I, I wasn't raised like that. Uh, my mom always worked. Every woman always works in, in, in Europe. And mm -hmm. uh, so it was never even an option. Um, so I enjoyed it, but it's not for me. Like I need to put makeup on. I need to be between adults. I need to feel like I contribute to society. So I, I bring something to this earth while I'm here. And uh, I, I just needed that. No offense for everybody who's 100% happy being a stay-at-home mom. I'm happy for you. It just wasn't for me. Mm -hmm. I, need, I need to make money and use my brain cells. And um, so I decided my neighbor actually was, you're so social, you have so many friends on social media because that's how I stay connected with my family at home. That's the only way for me to be able to see them is Facebook and, and not feel like I'm missing out. And uh, so she said she talked to a real estate company called Real Estate One here locally and I should go talk to them. And at mm. the time I was like, should I watch HGTV? I can do this. <laughs> How simple that <laughs> oh, is. Oh God. <laughs> yep. That's yeah. exactly what went through my mind. Yeah. And um, I went and talked to them. They, they said that if I passed my licensing, they would even pay for my licensing. So I paid $199. I passed the first round and they paid me back. So as far as, you know, as I, I invested $199, they paid me back. I'm $0 invested into real estate. I love it. And so I guess, what, so what made you decide to run down the path of social media? You know, we, we have talked a lot about a lot of different paths in business, but also in real estate with the FISBOs, the expired, the cold calling, the, the door knocking, the, the, the farming, the postcards, the, you know, the, the, you know, and then you've got the 7L system, which is, is based on repeat and referral, you know, and building relationships Oh my God. Hello. Take a picture of that. So that's awesome. So it is one of those where, so what made you decide to go down the path of, of social media as your preferred choice of, of prospecting? So when I got into it, so you see the kind of the world is against me because I'm in sales. I don't have the sphere of influence. On top of it, I have an accent. On top of it, my real name is impossible to pronounce. The nickname I go by is the wrong 1-800 phone number. And so I could go through, <laughs> we were broke. Between Dwayne and I, we had like six bucks to our name. And very early on, I figured out, and I also, I, I'm a researcher. So when something interests me, I'm going to get to the end of Google. I'm going to figure it out. Yeah. I'm not going to fail because I didn't try. If I fail, it just wasn't for me. I don't have the right capacity to write skills or something, but at least I gave it all I got. Mm -hmm. So I went into it knowing I'm going to be a top producer. There's no ifs or buts. There's, I don't know if the average or the listeners know that the average agent does one to two transactions a year. 80% of the agents give up in the first two years of real estate. Mm -hmm. I was not about to be a statistic. But with that same sentence, I would go in like the bad three-year-old. Like, I'm like that, but why? But why? But why? And I would go and talk to all of the top producing agents and ask their systems there. How do you do this? Why do you do this? Like, where are your leads coming from? How do you follow up? What do you say? What do you do when this happens? And I would go from door to door to door with the top producers' offices. And very quickly on, I realized that you have to spend money to make money. I didn't have any money to spend. Right. Then I realized you have to have a good sphere of influence, good skills and experience, which I had neither. Yeah. I realized many of them, um, the conversations I had at the time, I think that the times are changing now, but we are talking 2011. Mm -hmm. I would say 80% of them were cold calling. And I would say another, I mean, maybe 30% come from SOI and stuff, but mm -hmm. most of them were paying for Zillow leads. Yeah. Wow. And I didn't have the money and it was against kind of my religion of if I am doing something, I want to build my own brand and I want to generate those leads with my own name. So then I never have to rely on someone, no matter how economy changes. I want to be at Zillow in my local market. 
So yeah. I never bought a Zillow lead in my entire career. And, and then I didn't have the money. So what does that leave me? You can't cold call. My accent was so bad. And my name is Gogo. Like imagine if I call <laughs> somebody in Pinkley, Michigan with a strong accent and my name is Gogo seeing if they want to sell or buy. Like they're never going to sell with me. Yeah. Diversity rate in our neck of the woods is 1%. Yeah. Yeah. I, I have to comment on that because I mean, you brought up some, I mean, there are a ton of people who have limiting beliefs that are on, on listening to this right now, or they're watching this right now. And you got to realize you were in Brighton, Michigan, you're brand new, your English was solid, but not perfect. You had a heavy accent, you had no brand, you had no money, no sphere, right? You, you, you got a scholarship to get into the business, but you didn't get any education there. I know that you got a license, but you didn't get any education. And so it's like you, and I will tell you that I think sometimes the, the biggest hardship for people is money because if they have money, they will, they will buy leads. Well, what they don't realize is that they have, they have now established a master slave relationship with whatever lead generation company that they've hired. Now, I'm not saying anything bad. I mean, thank God there are people out there who run their businesses buying leads. I truly believe that buying leads is the cost for not building relationships and getting referrals. I, you, you either build relationships and get referrals or you're going to have to pay a cost. You're going to have to pay for advertising, pay for Zillow, pay for realtor.com, pay or pay in some other way. But you know what? When you have great relationships and you're getting a lot of referrals, you don't have to pay. And I, 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 but here's the thing that, that is different is I built my network uh, live and in person very quickly in Kansas City. So I, I didn't have much of a sphere, but I had a lot of advantages over you was that, you know, I didn't have a heavy accent. I didn't, and, and I already knew a few people. And what's beautiful about your story, Gogo, is your, it's so timely for right now because there's no networking groups going on right now. There's no events, live events to attend or host right now. The way people need to build their business, but maybe build relationships, is through social media. And so let's, let's jump right into that is, is, you know, first of all, what percentage of your business do you think was generated by being real on social media? And what does it mean to be real on social media? Okay, you ready? Yes, maybe. Yes. Oh, <laughs> there you go. This is being real on social media. I yeah. lost my phone tooth um, two months ago, and I let the world know. I mean, I yeah. could hide it. I wear this cute little yeah. gadget thing out for technology in the 20th century here at every. True. How'd you lose it? I left it in a, an awesome BLT. A sandwich? Yeah. Oh, jeez. That was a hard no, sandwich. Hard well, sandwich. And eight months of growing, I had to have bone graft, and eventually I will have a front tooth there. But the reason I wanted to show this is that when you decide to do social media, you have to decide to show the good, bad, and the ugly. Mm. That's rule number one. Rule number two, you have to be okay with shameless self-promotion. Mm. You have to let the world know who you are, what you do, what you stand for, what's your hustle, what's your work ethic. Mm. Why should they choose you versus the 2 million other realtors I could work with? Mm -hmm. Don't be that secret realtor. Even Tom Ferriss says, don't be that secret realtor. Mm -hmm. That means if you're not on social media for the millennial who's going to be the biggest chunk of the future buyers and sellers, you don't exist. Mm -hmm. They want instant gratification. They're going to Google you. They're going to go on social media and see if you have a presence. They're not, they don't want eye contact and a phone call. You're lucky if you get a text message back, yes or no. Mm -hmm. So social media is, it's a must. It used to be, oh, you should do it. You have to do it or you don't exist. You're a dinosaur. Mm. So how did you get started with it? So how did you get started with Facebook and Instagram? And like, what, what would you recommend or what would your advice be to, you know, someone who, you know, maybe they're not newer to Facebook. They've been on Facebook, but they don't really know how to get business from it. So yeah. what would you, how would, what would you suggest to them or what would your advice be? So my advice is always is you are your business. We are not selling real estate. We are selling ourselves and our services. 
So if you decide you want to do social media, you cannot just post your last listing and your last open house and your last closing. People could care less. If your picture is not in it, they don't have a clue who sold that house. 80% of your posts, you have to be in it. You do that for brand recognition, for name recognition, for face recognition, and you do that because when the information comes out of your mouth on a video, they can see that you know what you're talking about, that you're educated about the subject, that you are the expert in the area on that subject, and it just makes them automatic to, to choose you. So a few questions. Number one is, is I, I, I have a dilemma, right? You're mm -hmm. saying don't be a secret agent, but you're also saying don't post about my listings and my clients, right? So, mm -hmm. so what, what am I posting about? Yourself. That's why I'm saying don't be a secret agent. Secret agent means you're not in your post. Your listings are. So yeah. who's the agent? So give me an example. Like give me an example of, I, so uh, I got a new listing. I'm mm -hmm. very excited about it. Uh, yeah. It's quarantine. I did a virtual everything. I did a virtual listing presentation. I gave them instructions on how to take their own pictures. They took their own pictures. Mm -hmm. And now I have, and you know what? They did a pretty good job. Now I have this listing. Yeah. What, what do I do? What should you I do? You, I yeah, you have to. I mean, right now it's, it's harder because you can do a, a virtual open house. You can be there and hold the camera and you talk about the property and all that. What I'm, I'm not saying don't post your listing. Absolutely post your listings. But I'm saying don't let that be the only type of post you ever make. Yeah. It's your listings, it's your open houses, it's your closings. That doesn't work. People need to know who the agent is. Why should they choose you? Any agent can sell a house, yeah. maybe not for the right amount of return on the investment, maybe not the same time, maybe not with the same marketing and negotiation skills, but they can sell a house. You just gave me a great idea. You, you, have just, gave me, you just gave me a great idea. I okay. mean, so two things we could do. One is we could take a picture of the house, like in front and put it behind us on a virtual background. Right now I have a green screen behind me and I could put that house behind me and I could talk about it in, in a Zoom. So there are people who are familiar with Zoom. It'd yeah. be very easy to do that. And yeah. then the other thing is, listen, it's social distancing, it's physical distancing. That doesn't mean you can't drive up to the house and have somebody hold a camera and do a video in front of the house. Now you don't go in the house maybe because of the owners or whatever it may be. But the thing is, is that doesn't you know, mean you can't stand there and like, I mean, here's the thing. There's three reasons people should buy a house. It's, it's location, it's lot, and it's layout. Here's the thing. Two of the three, you can literally talk about while you're outside. You can talk about what a great location it is. You can talk about, look at this lot. It's a beautiful lot, whatever it may be. And then the layout, you can say, here's the thing. If you want to see the layout, it's a great call to action is, if you want to see inside this home, let me know. And we'll make arrangements for you to see the inside of the home. So it's like, that's, that's genius, Gogo. -Go. I, I will tell you, everybody needs to write that down. Everybody, and that's like, put down Gogo. -Go. Like that is, that, is, that is genius. Because you're, the house is in it, but it's not about the house. It's about the presenter. It's about the agent presenting the house. And it works on people's video games. Are you enjoying the Daily Dose? Want to connect with thousands of other business owners that are winning the referral game while working from home right now? Head over to the Generosity Generation Facebook group. Connect with leaders, visionaries, and business owners from all over the world. Go to www.joingengen.com. That's www.joingengen.com. So what are some of the challenges about being real on social media? Like being real, you're telling me I got to show my pimples. You mean I, you got to show me, like I got to break a tooth out. What I mean, I you see me with makeup on and without makeup on. And let me tell you, it's a huge difference. Thank God whoever invented it. <laughs> so that's what I'm trying to say. It's like, yeah. you can't fluff your numbers. Yeah. You know, you can't lie yeah. about anything because it's- Not anymore. Everybody knows them, right? They're, they're publishable. Yeah. 
So it's just like whenever you decide, you just go for straight the truth. You never have anything to worry about. You also can care about what people think because trust me, you're going to offend somebody on any given day just because your hair is blonde or just because you're a woman or just because you said this or just because you have an accent and you're an immigrant. Like there's a trillion reason how you can offend a person. And if you're doing this and, and needing that return acceptance, social media is never going to work. Mm. Just as many people are going to love you that they're going to not like you. Mm -hmm. so just get over it all together as long as you love yourself what do you care about anybody else what they think about you first love yourself fly you know hashtag fly first love yourself it's you can't love anybody else until you love yourself anyway <laughs> and yeah here's the other thing you're like yeah but you don't know where i come from yeah but you don't know my problem yeah you know what <laughs> go go does and i do I, like our stories yeah. are super rags like we wish we had rags in the beginning you know, forget rags to riches. We went from dirt to rags, right? So it's like, it's dirt poor, rag poor, and then you build off that. So, so the thing is, don't tell me your story. Here's the thing is, is it's one of those where, you know what? Be real, be authentic, be your true self, fall in love with yourself, which includes forgiving yourself. Forgive all the background. Like that's just stuff. Who has stuff? Raise your hand if you have stuff. Yeah. So in below comments, just say, I've got stuff. Everybody put, I've got stuff. Cause yeah. we've all got stuff. The, the thing is, is, what are you doing with the stuff, right? Stuff the stuffing, right? Stuff it and then move forward and go forward. And I will tell you, people are going to fall in love with you. When you love, when you fall in love with yourself, people will, this isn't about getting a big ego. You guys know where I come from. I demolished the ego era. Now we're in the generosity generation. The ego is, is it, this isn't about ego. This is just about a comfortable, humble self-confidence and self-esteem and a willingness to share your pimples or mm -hmm. your missing teeth or your problems or your challenges. But it doesn't mean like sharing your challenges all the time, sharing your problem. Just don't be a complainer. No. You know, there's there, like Roger Savvy said two weeks ago, he said there's going to be winners there's going to be whiners and there's going to be watchers be a winner be a winner like show them the winning self the winning you so i, I have to drive on the facebook group right yeah. one of the things that we have harped on is starting a facebook group like starting like even if you only get 100 people in it is starting a Facebook group, inviting five people a day. That's it. Just figure out what five friends you want to invite. Invite them. Don't just hit invite, but literally like invite them through a, a private message or on their on their uh, uh, personal page, like post on their wall. Somehow bigger than just an invite. Sure, invite them, but also follow up with the harder invite. So what what other other ideas do you have on on Facebook? And then I want to get the Instagram because you in my opinion, like, like Instagram is your, your like superpower. I, I believe social media is your superpower. There's a lot of people using Facebook, but I don't believe there are very many people period, let alone realtors using Instagram as well as you. So let's touch on Facebook and then hit Instagram. Are you okay with that? Absolutely. Okay. All right. So when so, you're reaching out to people, like you were saying, you want to invite certain people to your groups. What I would recommend, people like to be called by their name mm -hmm. and they like to be uh, acknowledged. So instead of just sending a message or going to their page, since you said do five a day, taking a, a, a selfie style video that is like 20 seconds, talking directly to the person, looking into their eye on the other end and calling them by the name. You'll say, hey, Jessica, I just want to invite you to my group. I know you have interest in the local real estate market and I know you would love our group is very loving, supportive, blah, 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 whatever you want to call it. And I would love to see you there. And I hope I see you there. How were you worded at the end? And then you send that quick little video. What did you do? You did a few, a few things. A, you acknowledge them by name. So this message is personal. You took the time of the day to take a video that is just for them and nobody else. You should say something positive about them and just say, I love that you are so active in the real estate market and I know that you are blah, blah, blah. Whatever there is something positive that you can say about them and then invite them over to your group. Now you send a 20 second video is gonna take you and then you're gonna follow up with the direct link to your group. And I guarantee you that your success rate of them actually coming and joining the group is going to be tenfold versus just sending a message that you copy and paste and send to everybody. 
Yeah, eighty percent plus success rate on that. There's, there's. Yeah. I mean, so we we do this thing called raw go go, which is which is when you make a call, make it a raw call, R A H, which is state the reason for your call. Because there's nothing more frustrating than somebody jumping on and they're rambling or hemming and hawing and, and, and it's like, what's your freaking point? You know, so <laughs> reason. And yeah. then A is appreciate, appreciate. So what do you appreciate? Yeah. So reason, appreciation. And then the H is help. Either ask for help or, or look for ways to help or just ask the other person, how can I help you? Right. So it's like the reason, hey, you know, you're doing the video. I love combining this idea with the raw instead of doing the phone call, you're going to do a video that you'll text message to them. It'll be, Hey, the reason for my video is this, Jamie, I just wanted to say, Hey, listen, I'd love for you to be a part of this group. One of the things I really appreciate about you is you're always giving, you're always positive. You're very successful in your field. I would love for you to be a part of this group. It's a, it's a community group. All we're doing is, is looking to help Kansas city, or we're looking to help Marietta, or we're looking to help Atlanta. And uh, you're a great part of that. I'd love to have you part of the group. And uh, here's the other thing is, is the way to help is just join it right now. But the other thing is I'd love to know how I can help you. I'd love to help you. Let me know and we'll see you in the group. I'll, I'll forward you the link after this video. Click. Yep. And, then I, and then I send the link. Yeah. I love that. I mean, I'm sorry to be so like literal and implementing immediately, but you're like, like this is the daily dose of positivity and productivity. There's some days we need the positivity. There's other days where we need the productivity. You know what I mean? And it's like this, you are giving such actionable content and such great things for the productivity side that it's, it's off the charts. I love this. I mean, awesome. that's the number one way to invite. You could even do a general invite that you send to private messages if you wanted to invite a greater group of people. There's nothing colder. And I will tell you, I have learned this from experience. There's nothing colder than the simple invite that you just click invite from your group. Is it fast? Is it easy? Is it there? And Facebook created for it? Yes. But you know what? Fast and easy is not always right. It's not always smart. It's not always the best way. And what GoGo -Go just outlined is the best way. What they say, if you want to have an easy life, do what's difficult. Yeah, there you go. Right? Exactly. So, all right, now Instagram, and you are talking to- If I may go like, back a tiny bit to Facebook. Yeah, absolutely. Are you kidding me? You want to give us another great idea to use on a Facebook group? You, you can talk all day. Let's go. So Facebook groups are great, but the downside to them that it's limited. You can't market to the masses. It's a limited group. They have to be a member of to see what you're posting. And so you're limiting yourself. So yes, concentrate on it and have your own group and be the leader of the group because then you're not limited on what you can or cannot post, mm -hmm. number one. But what you should concentrate on is a business page. With business page, you can read the masses, reach the masses, and you can reach anyone that currently doesn't know of you with, with like an ad. You can run an ad for five bucks a day and reach the people. You can post similar content on both of them. And maybe when it comes, because on your business page, they're not going to be able to post um, their own stuff, but what, then you invite them over to the, to the group where they are able to post and share their stuff as well, not just only see yours. But you want to be able to have a business page because without a page, you can't advertise. Without advertising, you're not going to be able to reach strangers. Love it. I need to invite the page people to the group. I need, yeah. and by the way, if, if uh, uh, so I have a Facebook page with, I don't know, not quite 80,000 likes or people. And then, yeah. and then uh, I need to invite them to the, to the Facebook group. Good yeah. call. So yeah. let's, let's switch gears to, to Instagram mm -hmm. because I have to tell you, I'm, I'm genuinely curious, you know, yeah. Instagram is it, you know, everybody's like, well, everybody's flooding over to TikTok. But the thing is, is I think TikTok is just another funnel, top of the funnel to drive towards Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube and into your funnel. Right. Yeah. So but so I think Instagram fits in a bigger place, in my opinion, right? Yeah. So so what should someone do to get started with Instagram? Someone like me, I'm a I'm, you know, I'm a novice. I don't know what I'm doing at all. Sure. So I look at I look at Instagram as your storefront. So I take it seriously. It's my business. I don't just post to post. I post with the idea that that post will generate me a potential client who will turn into a client who will turn into a commission. Hmm. 
Okay, so that's the reason you post. We don't just post because we got nothing else to do. Okay, so if you don't mind, open up Instagram and we'll go through my profile and just give some uh, hints of what your profile should look like because that's very important. Does that sound good? Yes. Can you make it more generic just so that I'm not distracted? <laughs> yeah, go to Instagram and in the search field, that little yes. um, search icon, put in Google's real estate. And then let's go through my profile and just kind of start with your storefront of what your storefront should look like. Okay. If you have all the bells and whistles. Okay. You ready? Let me know when you're ready. I am ready for you to describe. I will catch up. Okay. So photo is the number one most important. The what? The photo. Photo. Okay. So you see my photo is that lady in the red dress? Yes. Lady in the, red dress, in the red dress is on my yard signs. It's on my business cards. It's in my email signature. It's every social media profile picture that I account I have for that lady in the red dress. You're going to have the same photo for every account because you want brand recognition. Target doesn't have a trillion different logos. Starbucks doesn't have a trillion different logos. They have one. You're mm. going to have one until everybody and their mother, when you walk to the grocery store, knows who you are and what you do. Mm. When people are staring at you and they're like, that's that go-go check. Mm -hmm. that's what you want to achieve and she's a realtor that's love what it. you want to achieve love it Until so everybody knows you what you do you're going to choose that photo now some agents make the mistake that they use like their high school photo from like <laughs> yeah. don't do that so yeah. if you no longer look like that person then you're going to change that photo but when you change it you're going to change it on all profiles what do you think about using an avatar or no. a you don't you, you think it has to be a real picture okay do you see Tony Robbins' avatar or Oprah's avatar or do you see Tony and Oprah? Okay. Okay. Nope. You. No. Yeah. You, really you, you. are your brand. You. Yeah. You are your brand. Yeah. You want so should it be a glamour you. shot or should it be like a shot from the field? Mine was literally, t I, am, I think it's important for be like from here to here, you know, so you want people to be able to recognize you. If it's a too far away photo, they're not going to be able to recognize you and put you out of the crowd. Okay. But this photo was taken with my cell phone, so I didn't pay for it. I did put it wow. through 17 apps, <laughs> as I do with everything else. And that is the number, uh, we'll, we'll go through my feed very quick and explain what apps I use and all that to kind of make my storefront look pretty. But the next thing is your name. Okay. So photo and second name. Okay. Because if your name and one profile is Brighton's favorite realtor, and then the next profile is Kevin Smith, and then the third profile is luxury homes in Brighton, Michigan, then they don't know who the heck you are. Yeah. And especially if you don't have the same photo for all of these people, they don't even know it's the same realtor. Yeah. So you want to make sure that the name that you're going to use, that is going to be your brand. I am Google's real estate everywhere. Mm -hmm. I'll go back to LinkedIn because there you have to use your actual name, not a business name. But other than that, I am Google Real Estate everywhere. So whatever your name is, you're going to go on Instagram and you're going to make sure that it's available. If that name is already taken, you're going to have to improvise. You might have to use an underscore or put a number at the end. There's always something you can do, right? The Batki group instead of a Batki group or however you're going to, whatever yeah. you're going to name it. And then you're going to go and own your .com. These two are the most important. Okay. Your name on Instagram and your .com because those two, you cannot, if somebody already owns it, you can't own it unless you buy it from them. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's not for sale. Do you have gogorealestate.com? Oh yeah. I have every version of my name, Gogo Batki, Gogo Real Estate, Gogo Real Estate Team, Gogo Preneur, Gogo uh, Team Gogo EXP, Team Gogo, you name it, I own it all. Yeah, I so, own every version of my name. All right, so go to mine. Yeah. So you're you said you had some suggestions for ours. You're going to be harsh, right? Yeah, I'm like, I'm like, are you sure? Are you, you're not going to bite my head off, are you? No, maybe. <laughs> no. Remember, this is my show, though. I'm okay. kidding. <laughs> no, I, you know what? Listen, this is being real, Gogo. I know I'm a novice. Like, I'm, a, I'm beyond a novice. And, and we've been, we've been running Instagram as a, as a hood ornament. Like, it's just a, it's just a thing, right? So, okay. yeah. So, what's a novice? I don't know what that means. Novice means beginner. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So here we go. Can you tell who this guy is from this photo? Do you know who the guy is? Uh, no. He looks hot though. He looks like a lion. I'm just kidding. You're telling me that I got a logo, right? I need to put my picture. I I don't know if this is for real Michael Mayer's account because I don't know. It's a logo. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The name is perfect because that is your name, and I know it's you because look what's in the bottom of the book. That's right. And that's how it's spelled, the same exact way. So you own your name, that's awesome. 
Thank you. Now, in the description, okay. uh, I don't see realtor or real estate anywhere. Well, I will tell you, I teach realtors, so I need to put that in there. But I really am a speaker, author, trainer yeah. more that's, than, that's, than a that's realtor. What I do, but I'm still tied to realtors and real estate, and those are your preferred audience. Okay, I like so it. In order for them to find you, you have to hashtag the right words. And since okay. we're at hashtags, let's talk about hashtags. Okay. okay. So if you look at my profile, for example, I explain why I chose realtor and Michigan. Yeah. Because those are the three most important things in my business. I am a realtor and I do teach realtors. Yeah. The realtor as a hashtag, it's in my word. Now in my description, in my bio. Now, when you are on Instagram, you can actually follow certain hashtags. When you have that hashtag in your profile, your profile is going to show up when somebody else follows that hashtag. So if somebody follows the hashtag realtor, you having the hashtag realtor in your bio, your account is going to pop up. Mm -hmm. By using the same hashtags in your post, we can go through a post. Like, let's say if you go on gogosrealestate.com or Google's Real Estate on Instagram, just yeah. open up like my last post, uh, this one, for example. Yeah. That talks about. That's a beautiful house. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Boom. See that? Okay. So open that one up and you'll see in the description, then I said a little Monday motivation and I hashtag Monday motivation mm -hmm. today at 1 p.m. with who? Michael Jimmy Hurt. And I, hey, tagged me. You, and I tagged you. So now me tagging you, it gives all 46,000 of my followers now saw your name. And they're like, who is this Michael guy? They're going to click your profile. They're going to go over there. And if your storefront is pretty and they feel like you're giving them something that they should stick around for, they're going to click the follow button. That's beautiful. What, one second on that. I want to I share that. So comments below. First of all, do you have questions for the social media queen, Gogo Bethke? Get your questions in now and we will do our best to ask those. The second thing is, are you on Instagram? If you're on Instagram, put your handle below and let's connect to each other on Instagram. We're, we're part of the generosity generation. We should know each other. And guess what? Let's, let's connect on Instagram, figure out what that looks like, make it happen. Go become one of GoGo's 41, 46,000 friends, followers. So, all right. So what else do I need to do on mine? Okay, then you. I'm changing my picture like tomorrow. That's that's a, actually I'll do it today. That's a good one. Right. Then we'll finish up that post. You see, in the bottom of my post, I have all of those hashtags. Yeah. Now, yeah, I love those. Now you have to use hashtags. You can use up to thirty in every single post. You don't have to use thirty, but you can use up to thirty. How many do you use on average? On average, between fifteen and twenty. Okay. Yeah. So you're hashtag happy. Is that what you're? <laughs> many times, many times. Yeah. Today, I use the hashtags motivation, enthusiasm, success, failure, money, millionaire mindset, books, success tips, inspiration, and inspirational quotes. So that's right up my alley. So those, those are ones I would also copy. So what hashtag do you feel like should be my hashtag? You always hashtag your own name and own brand as well. So I start with that usually. I always hashtag realtor, realtors, realtor life, real estate. But then you hashtag Michael J. Maher. Then you hashtag the Gen Gen group or the Gen Gen, Lee Gen Gen, or whatever your, your team is, how you spell that. I think you just do Gen Gen. Internet. What, will you type in, if you do hashtag Gen Gen, mm -hmm. where does it go? You like G, G E N G E N. Does it go to us? Yeah, let's see. Hashtag G E N G E N. <laughs> I love it. I've taken two pages of the notes. <laughs> so there is 6.4 thousand Gen Gen hashtags. So your hashtag Gen Gen being used 6,400 times. Yeah. So that's awesome. That's good. So now I'm just going to click one of them, let's say. I hope it's the right one. <laughs> so it could be other agents using it as well that are members of your group. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Yeah, maybe. You know what I mean? So there's a lot of, um, it's been used a lot of times. I don't see it taking back to your account though. Yeah. So maybe just use it a little bit more often. Yeah. You okay. can stop. Because what happens is eventually you want to make it to this page on Instagram, which is yeah. like, that question mark or not. Yeah. The, the search. Yeah. The search button. Yeah. I can't mm -hmm. think of what that's called in English. Magnifying yeah. glass. Yes, thank you. Um, so you want to make that make it to that page is called the explore page. That's okay. where people who don't know of you can explore you, meaning can, they can find you. Yeah. Okay, so now I'm going to go back to your account. 
Michael Jimmy here. I love it. This is great advice. Okay, right here. Rule number one on Instagram. If your photo has more than 20% letters in it, Instagram is not even going to show it. So wow. not your followers that are already chosen to follow you going to see your post. Mm -hmm. So in average, you have one like. Look at that one. That's one like. That's because none on this one. Yeah. Because when you have letters in your post, yeah. it's not going, Instagram's not going to show it. So, so it needs to be 90% photo it needs to be a whole photo you with see, a little I bit posted, of words i posted a photo yeah a beautiful home when yeah. you click it i say go to the second photo to see about my life today yeah there's two photos but i hide the one that has the letters yeah, yeah. because if you if i would have posted that one yeah. nobody would have seen it but whatever i, I would have looked at it i like it but I'm just telling you, yeah. you have to listen to what's working and what's not. You can see the proof is in the pudding. It's in the numbers. You're going to see it. And, and okay, number one rule, you cannot do it on a personal page. You have to do it on what's called a business page. So you can have what's called insight. Yeah. Is it a business page or a personal page? I love it. It's a business page, I'm, I believe. Okay. So when you have a business page, it's going to show you your insights right there. So you know how to spend your money. If you decide to run ads who you should target, what time of the day is your audience on the market? Are they men or are they women? Are they between the ages of 30 to 40 or are they 18 years old? So you wanna be able to know the insights because if you decide to spend money on marketing, which my goal is to teach everyone how to do it for free because my marketing cost is $0. But if you do decide and you wanna grow faster, then you can do throw five bucks, 10 bucks at it on Facebook ads and Instagram ads and grow faster. But for that, you have to have a business page. Yep. Okay. So yep. back to um, back to your account. You're gonna update your photo. You're gonna update your bio. Yes. And in your bio, you only have one site. That's called join. Oh, that's a direct link to your Facebook group. That's right. If you go to mine, you will see. So us realtors, we wear so many hats. And when you decide to do social media, you do it to be able to make passive income in multiple different ways. Mm -hmm. I don't only just sell houses and list houses and help buyers buy it. I make right, recommendations right. for lenders and CRM programs and it, or people who decide to get the real estate license and I make money on that. I have an Amazon store and when I recommend something and you click it, I make two to 10% on it. I have multiple ways how I make money. So the number one thing that if you nothing else you get done today is sit down and write down the 10 ways of how you can make the most amount of money. And for that, you have to have a link. The best one to do it is Linktree. For whatever reason, my Linktree account got blocked, so I can't use it anymore in my Instagram account. Um, mm. They flagged it for some reason, and we're going back and forth trying to figure out why. But until then, I pretty much just built mine out. So if you go back to Google's real estate very quick, and you click my link, yeah. you'll see it's going to pop up looking like this that has a oh, bunch yeah. of different links. Love it. One of the ways that I can make money. So is, you, that, is that, that's from Instagram? Nope. So you can get yours done on Linktree. Oh, Linktree. Linktree, yeah. How do you spell that? L-I-N-K. Okay. T-R-E-E. -E. Okay. And it's free. I love it. This is what you're going to think about. Okay. Let's say, how do I make money? I have my CRM program that I can lead generate for open houses. Like I use KV Core. We are EXP agents. So KV Core allows you to have all of these lead generation tips. I'm sure you have whatever lead generation programs you use. So how can you make money in real estate? A, selling houses. Mm -hmm. So for that, you're gonna go onto your website, you're gonna find the link where it says how much your home is worth. You're gonna add it to your link that says, find out how much your home is worth here. They're gonna mm -hmm. plug themselves in there and do it and the system even does a CMA for you. Right. So I'm automatically follows up with them. All you need to do is make a phone call. They literally plug themselves into your CRM program. Then you're gonna do the next one is what? The buy side. You're gonna say, here's my free buyer's guide. Here's a free half an hour phone call with me to talk about the buying process. Here are the homes. Here is where you can search for homes in Livingston County. Okay, then on Thursdays, you're going to say, or in that I'd automatically also do posts on Facebook for this. Every day is a different post. But then you're going to do your open houses. He's like, here's a link, guys, to check all of the open houses for the weekend in Livingston County. Then that's a link. So then you can do all of the different ways. Like everything will go back. Like I do podcasts and public speaking just like you do. I have my boot camp program and all that. So everything will go back is on, on, on one side. Then I have... You know, learn about ESP, finesse Facebook ads training, free social media class, free Facebook ads. And this is not the reason why you want to do free stuff, guys, is of course, I want to help everybody, but that's how you grow your database. Mm -hmm. 
is by giving. The more you give, the more you get. The more yeah. connections you make, you know this, the get more it. you're going to make. I love it. I love it. This is uh, this has been off the charts, go go. I, I'll tell you, we're running right out of time. I mean, it's like yeah. I could talk to you for like five hours. I love well, this. That's I how help everybody make money. This is not yeah. about posting. It's about making money. That's exactly right. Exactly right. I mean, and on social media. And uh, man, this is this has been awesome. Like I said, I've taken two pages of notes. I'm not sure if I've ever like been as directed and been as pinpoint and gone as deep on inter any interview I've done on the Daily Dose or Referrals podcast. Literally, I have a list of things to do to change our Instagram, to help our Facebook group. And well, call me anytime. If you have a person that you're going to assign to this, uh, which I recommend because it's not a best time of your use, but you have to be in the photo. This is your account. Can you tell me who Michael Mayer is? Do I know? Not, who not from those photos. It, it looks like he's doing a lot of daily doses. Yeah, but I don't know who True. you are. Yeah. I don't know what you do. Yeah. I don't know why you do it. I don't know your mindset. I don't know your hustle. I don't know why yeah. I should follow you. Yeah. This is your name. So I should know who you are and why I should follow you. I understand you have all of these guests, but you should have a photo of you first. And then a second would be this slide. Talk about the guests and talk about why you invited that person today. Why you want to know about social media. Why blah, 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 blah. If you see mine, mine is very personal. It's a lot of my thoughts and the, the successes and failures and the, and the mindset that I learned through the years is to help others to not, you know how it is. You learn from your mistakes most of the time. That's the most successful lesson you ever learn. Hopefully you learn it. And you don't have to commit it multiple times over to get the lesson. And it but doesn't cost also, you a lot of money or time, right? Exactly. Hopefully. But then also helping others with it. If yeah. I can help you to understand a certain mindset without you having to go through that lesson and learn it the hard way. Yeah. I did my job on earth. I saved you a heartache and I taught you something. So the more you can give to people, the more you're going to get from life. Mm. Drop the mic on that one. That was it. That's how we're going to end this episode. That's beautiful. So ladies and gentlemen, first of all, thank you so much for tuning in today's Daily Dose. Can we give a huge round of applause to Go 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 Go? Thank you so much for being our guest on the Daily Dose of Positivity and Productivity. You knocked it out of the park today. Appreciate you. Thank you so much. And if I can help you when you decide that this is what you want to do, just let's hop on a call. I'll give you all the, the guidance in a, a quick uh, training session. I'm in. Uh, I'm in. You find me on, you know, just imitate. Imitate the successful people. That's what I do. I'm like, oh, why did they do that? How did they do that? And then I didn't invent the wheel. That's right. Why don't reinvent the wheel, right? No. No. I love it. So, ladies and gentlemen, this has been another great episode of The Daily Dose. Are you kidding me? I'm, if I took two pages of notes, I'm guessing you took at least a page or two of notes yourself. You guys have kicked butt. You guys are always here every single day, 1 p.m. Eastern, Monday through Friday, on The Daily Dose. Tomorrow, we have Brandon Tracy. Are you kidding me? Tomorrow, we have Brandon Tracy. You're going to love BTG, the Brandon Tracy group, and what he's going to talk about. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us here on The Daily Dose. We will see you tomorrow. Thank you so much for having me.